Hello and welcome to the NC podcast. My name is Natasha Collins and I am the founder of NC Real Estate, which includes its members club for landlords and property investors to build profitable property portfolios that completely aligns with their goals. How are you doing this week? Did you enjoy last week's podcast with Christine? I hope you had some aha moments where the light bulb went off and you're like, yeah, scarcity mindset is a real thing. And hopefully it's given you some tools to deal with that because you'll be able to move forward in a lot more open way by using some of the tools that she gave you. Now, I want to give you an update on something which, if you have been following my podcast for a while, you will know about. And at the time of recording this, at the day of recording this, which is the 27th of February, I know I'm I'm like a couple of weeks before, so things could change. But today, I had to hand in the counter submission for the leasehold tribunal. It's been one of these things that has just been ongoing for months and months and months and months. So if you don't remember, what happened was, was the head leaseholder served directions on us as the leaseholders that they wanted to take us through the leasehold tribunal process because they thought we were in dispute with them over um, the different charges that they want to levy on us for doing the externals works and actually the whole problem was with the freeholder because they could never agree and haven't agreed for at least the last seven years of who's responsible to do the works so every time the roof repairs come up neither party can decide on it so it gets battered back down and meanwhile there are leaks coming through the roof into leaseholders flats the externals of the building are in terrible repair And it's just a bit of a mess, really. So what happened back in January was that we were told that we had to go and put counter submissions in. But here's the problem. They're not included, the freeholder, in the circulation for the tribunal, which meant that they were only trying to deal with us. So I, after a lot of emails backwards and forwards, finally got the head leaseholder to go to the tribunal judge and say, hey, hold up, we forgot to bring in the freeholder. Please can you add freeholder to proceedings? The freeholder was added to proceedings. Everybody got sent out a new timeline of works and a timeline of works, a a schedule of how this tribunal is going to proceed. And we had to get our... Uh, respond response to their uh, whatever it is that they thought was the problem we had to get that done by today at five o'clock now let me tell you that at 4 30 p.m leaseholders responded so we've done it let me also tell you that i have a little bit of joy at thinking that probably they saw these submissions and went oh something (laughs) i'm hoping that they feel like they've messed up a little bit so what do we do well we went back to them and said that actually we agreed with the cost of works because over the past 18 months we've never seen a complete cost of works but if the 108,500 is what they are relying on for the tribunal absolutely fine we agree with that because as long as they can carry out the schedule of works as agreed in a leaseholder meeting in 2019 and they can do that within the £108,000, we are fine. We agree to go ahead. We're not going to dispute it. All we want to know is um, some more information about what new windows we are going to have fitted. That is the end of the dispute with us. That is where it finishes. There was no dispute in the first place. We just didn't know that that was how much it was going to cost. So at least through the tribunal proceedings, they had to disclose their hand and tell us how much it's going to cost. But then we turned it back around on them and said, well, hold on a second. From 2013 and previously, you've been saying that you would agree who's responsible for the roof works 
under the head lease. But that's nothing to do with us and that's all we've been waiting for. And as of that, we also want to know who's responsible for the costs associated with that. So how is the £108,000 going to be split up? What are the commercial units going to have to pay under the freeholder? And what are the residential units going to pay under the head leaseholder? So you need to get that determined. You need to do that quickly and you need to get that sorted. Thirdly, something that happened that was absolutely glorious overnight last night. As you will recall, one of my biggest concerns, one of the things that I was most freaking annoyed about was the fact that they were trying to put the costs of this dispute on us as leaseholders. They wanted us to pick up the legal costs. They said that it was chargeable under the... Um, under the service charge clause that every all of the cost of the legal proceedings would be payable by our service charges. And I saw read at this because I was like, well, your solicitors know how much is in our sinking fund. So obviously they are just going to keep winding up their costs and winding up their costs and winding up their costs until they use up all of our pot and then we have to pay this extra amount of money um, to put it back in the pot to get our sinking fund back up to however much is in there at the moment. So I had started the formal complaints process around this because I must admit, if we're looking back to last week's uh, podcast, I did get tunnel vision around this because I was like, hell no, are we paying your legal fees? This has been going on for years and years and years and years. And also I had it in the back of my mind that actually we shouldn't be paying for it anyway. All of the leaseholders had been working on this submission, making sure that we had gone through all of our paperwork and we'd looked at the history of what was going on and all of the documents that had been sent to us um, over the course of the last couple of years. And one of the things that one of the leaseholders had found was that back in 2014, they had written to all leaseholders and said that they would pick up the cost of the dispute between the freeholder and the head leaseholder over the determination of the lease. Which means we will not be paying for the cost of this. So they have dragged us through something that we are not in dispute of and that they have to pick up the cost of and they were probably only trying to drag us through it to try and get us to pick up the cost of it. We just sent out the counter submission. Actually, within about half an hour of sending out the counter submission, the other side solicitor came back to us and said, um, have you sent this to the judge or the tribunal? And we responded that no, it wasn't in the directions that we had to do that. But do you want us to do it? And the solicitor came back and was like, oh no, please don't do that. I mean, obviously, because you have no claim in the first place. So... As it stands at this moment in time, as of recording, we will probably still be going to the tribunal, but actually we now have to wait for the head leaseholder to respond to us by the 12th of March. In that time, they can come to a settlement and they can offer us a settlement, which fine, if that's what they want to do. Um, or they can now take that one step further and say to the tribunal, here's the submissions from the leaseholders. We are going to go to tribunal over this. Now, I would absolutely be shocked if the judge would hear it because there's no dispute with us. We've agreed to the 108,000. We are agreed to the cost. We just want to know what the determination is between the head leaseholder and the freeholder over the works.